Welcome to the GOG Cast, brought to you by XSplit Broadcaster, simple yet powerful live streaming and recording. And now, your host, Leah. Hi ho! <laughs> Steph told me she likes my intro, <laughs> so I decided to like, spice it up today. <laughs> that <was> really spicy. <laughs> That was very, um, cranky. Yeah, I know. Hi, no. Sorry. Let's <laughs> just not do that again. Oh, God. You know, I got, I gotta, like, start it off and give us the giggles to start so we can, you know, you know it's gonna be a fun night when Leah's already silly. If you did that again, I'm gonna put a picture of poop next to your face. No, there will be another that's okay hello and welcome to another gog cast this is episode number 64 and i hope and pray that twitch stays with us today because i can't get drunk again actually i really didn't get drunk, that drunk last last week because uh my jack ran out i think Catholic might have had a few too many she was like well on it was fun though it was entertaining you guys should check that out it's sorry youtube decided it didn't want to do it so if you want that one you got to go download it from uh itunes but that's okay hearing us talk is really fun um thanks to all of you for coming to hang out with us here this evening and catching this of course later on youtube this one will end up on youtube i promise and on itunes uh but let me introduce you to the panel here today we've got my other half, co-founder and chief, Miss Catherine Smith Debiang. How are you doing, my dear? I'm doing great. I'm a bit hungry, but I'm great. But you just ate. I know I didn't eat enough. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll make sure that we get you more food before the podcast is over. Your hair is looking really nice too. It's really nice and long. I like it with the toque. It's nice. I know. Thank you. I'm I'm wearing the toque to hide the fact that the top is greasy and dirty. Oh. <laughs> that was wonderful. I never would have known. <laughs> We also have Miss Stephanie on with us here today. She is the newest member of GOG, so welcome. Thank you. And she is uh, writing some really, really cool content on the site. You can check out her snow sewing DIY pillows made out of those, you know, super huge t-shirts that you always get handed out at <laughs> and stuff, but are like the awesomest and you never want to get rid of them. And you're like, this mm -hmm. is so cool. I want to keep it because it has Call of Duty on it. And then it's like an extra large and you wear a woman's small. So that's always a problem. Well, never fear. Steph has that <laughs> for you. <laughs> so Stephanie, welcome to the team. We really appreciate all you've done so far and Aww. are really excited to see more. Thanks. I'm excited too. Yeah, we've got some cool stuff that you got to see last weekend at EGLX to talk about when the time comes. Yes. Yeah. And our extra special guest here this evening, Miss Julie, also known as Scarlet Cosplay. Welcome, my dear. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. I've been following your um, Facebook page for like, oh God good two years i think now it's been yeah. see that long yeah, <laughs> probably as long as it's been around because i remember seeing you once or twice at comic-con oh wow got it being super impressed and i was like oh i'm gonna track her down so yeah <laughs> i've been following you and uh and yeah i'm super impressed what you do is really top notch and probably i guess my favorite montreal cosplayer dude like i'm gonna be so blushy that's okay <laughs> i managed to get you on my podcast <laughs> So yeah, this is going to be really fun because not only, um, and now I don't know if I should be calling you Scarlet or Julie. You can do whatever you want. Either. Okay. So people are going to get real confused when they're listening to me. <laughs> I stick with Julie. But yeah, we're going to talk about all the stuff that you do and show some of your cosplay photos and all that kind of stuff too. It's going to be lots of fun, but you're also a gamer. So this makes total sense. So I want to know, what are you playing right now? Lord, seriously, um, I'm a big chicken whenever I play games. Oh, yeah? And I've been like that since I was a kid, okay? It was like really, really weird. Um, like right now, whenever I have like a little bit of time with cosplay and stuff, well, I tried to finish the Rise of the Tomb Raider. Like, mm. <laughs> but crafting. I, yeah, my big problem is actually that my computer is really old right now. And I just bought my new one yesterday, no, no, Saturday. Nice. And it's like ready now. So I'm supposed to be like going to pick it up like tomorrow. So I'm finally going to be able to game. Ooh. like for real so i'm like yes <laughs> i finished that game it's awesome i know i, I watched it like through walkthroughs at work oh, it's so good <laughs> it's so good what are you doing watching walk through at walkthroughs at work are you as bad as i am <laughs> i have two screens they don't know 
<laughs> I'll never know. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> Sweet. Kat, what do you play? I uh, mean, myself, sorry, I was talking <laughs> shit in chat with the small. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm currently playing uh, Bravely Second a and Layer. Because mm, right. one, one JRPG just follows the next on my 3DS. Uh, so far, I'm enjoying it. Very similar to Bravely Default, the previous game. Like, uh, still the job system, very flexible job system that you can easily customize and multi class and switch your characters. You have the Brave and the Second um, uh, mechanic, which is basically protecting yourself and not taking a turn so that you can use Brave and then use two turns and one turns. And then you can either accumulate turns or you can spend them and be in a turn deficit. It's a bit hard to explain, but it's really good. It's a um, classic Square Enix JRPG, turn-based. I love it. I like it. I have a wizard. <laughs> you have a wizard. That's all that matters. You have a wizard. Well, I don't know. This one started with wizard. I was like, where's my black mage? This is basically Final Fantasy. Where's my black mage? <laughs> it's like Final Fantasy when they didn't want to make one. That That's exactly what it is. That is exactly what it is. It had great success, and they're like, well, let's do the second one and still not call it Final Fantasy, but we all know what it is. That's okay. That's okay. We is, don't mind. Is, your, is your, your wizard of the unicorn variety? <laughs> <laughs> I love ninja sex party because I love dick jokes, but I also love dick jokes when they're <laughs> It's like dick jokes, but better. <laughs> exactly. If you could even do that, is that possible? It's like a double rainbow. <laughs> Sweet. Steph, you playing some Call of Duty? I'm always playing Call of Duty. Fair enough. <laughs> Nothing wrong Duty with that. Um, but I am playing Slither IO right now, which we were talking about in Discord earlier. It's like mm -hmm. a Mario with snakes, but I can't stop playing it. <laughs> it's addicting. Yeah, it's a mobile game, right? Uh, it's like online, but you can't play it on, on mobile. But Okay, cool. I'm, I'm not that skilled. I need the big screen. <laughs> cool. I am actually playing a game that you reviewed. I'm playing some Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, so far so good. That game is so pretty. It is. It's, but it's yeah, but after reading your review of the movie and speaking to some other people, I think I'm not gonna go bother and see that in theaters. Yeah, sorry, it, Sony. It's just all the cutscenes, really. Yeah, which is perfect for kids when you think yeah. about it, because that's exactly what they want. They want to relive the movie over and over again. Mm -hmm. so. I didn't finish the game, and I saw the movie, and I'm like, no, I just ruined the whole game. <laughs> oh well, that's all you can do. I'm also playing. Uh, I turned on my Vita. For the first time in a long time and uh downloaded sever by severed by drinkbox studios which is out of toronto and that game is awesome it's like it's like the best touch game i've probably ever played it's, and you can't you wouldn't be able to do it on an iphone or anything like that because you do need the uh the uh analog stick joystick mm -hmm. and then your the whole mechanic is like swiping for cutting and things and depending on like the direction and the length of the swipe and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um, it matters uh, to your attack uh, power and all that kind of stuff. And it's like an RPG, and it's first person. I could kind of see if it would work in a uh, like a, a virtual reality setting, but then, I don't know, maybe you'd have to use something else to swipe, like maybe an actual sword, which would be kind of cool. But yeah, it's really neat. I like it. I'm really enjoying that game. And it's nice to have my Vita in my hand again. It's been a while. <laughs> Might be the last, you know, huzzah for Vita. I don't know. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot that console existed altogether. <laughs> it's such a nice console, too. I should go get mine. But, like, the form factor of it, it's beautiful. And the, like, glossy clear, like, you know, the trigger buttons? They're mm. see-through plastic. I can't even talk now. They're see-through plastic, and they're really nice. They kind of look like ice. And, you know, oh, it's just everything about that console. Like, I, I really like it, but I don't know. Just never no didn't play a whole lot. There are games. You just really got to hunt for them. It's not like the big blockbuster games. That's all. Yeah, but it is It is a nice console. Like, I remember when you got it at the office, and I was just like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, when um, Gravity Rush comes out for uh, PS4 and the Gravity Rush 2 comes out, everybody needs to play that game. 
well, Gravity Rush. I don't know about two yet. I mean, it's not out. But that's one of my favorite games on there, along with Guacamelee. And that's by Drinkbox, too. And I was like, oh, well, I like Guacamelee. I better give Severed a try, even though it's completely different. Different game mechanic, different, you know, style. But the art, you can see the art traveled over, and I really like their style. So, uh, yeah, it's a great game. Great game. All right, let's get into some news. Because there's been lots of news this week. It's Usually it's kind of quiet, but this week has been kind of wild. So how many of you ladies own an Xbox 360? Step. <laughs> all right, step. Like we in. all do. <laughs> no, actually, I never owned an Xbox 360. Really? Neither did Kat. Yeah, it was the one yeah. console I didn't, I didn't have last generation. Well, it's our last chance, Kat, because uh, the production has ceased on the Xbox 360. So, yeah. Sorry. Bye bye, Xbox. I'll Xbox. ship you mine. <laughs> That's okay. We got the Xbox <laughs> One with backward compatibility. We don't have to stress too much. <laughs> I literally have no room for it, so. Bye. Well, wait. You're moving into a new house. You might have room. I have, I have two. Room cause one. You I have two? room right now. I have two. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Because I live with my boyfriend and he already had his and I already had mine, so it's basically like now we have two. That works. Hey, no, that's good because Mike and I both have Xbox Ones, and that's how we're able to play together because well, they don't have split screen as much anymore. So he plays yeah, in the living room and I play in here. 360 wasn't like that yet. No, it wasn't. <laughs> nope, that's true. Well, Xbox 360, you had a wonderful run. You're still kicking, but they're not going to make any new ones. So <laughs> fond farewell. Hopefully, uh, nobody gets a ring of death. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure enough people know how to fix it now. And the thing was, I think they've gone through those and fixed the chips and stuff. I actually, actually, for the hardcore nerds out there, um, you'll have to go back a little while. I think it might have been in the summer around June or July. Well, July would make sense because it was E3 time. I, I'm a hardcore podcast listener. I wanted to start my own. And uh, IGN's um, Xbox Unlock podcast, they actually had three... Uh, I guess they're not CEOs or what do they call the head person at Xbox? Like Phil Spencer. It was Phil Spencer and two other guys who was Phil Spencer's job prior to him with one of the guys uh, from X from IGN who deals with, you know, like he covers Xbox stuff. And uh, they talk about like the launch and the three ring of death and all the kind of stuff and all the different generations of Xbox. And it's a really, really interesting podcast. You guys should go listen to it. And yeah, they talk about that and the process that they had to go through with fixing the three red lights. It's a good listen. I think it's also in video form. If I track it down, I'll tweet it out. <laughs> it's been a little while. All right. We've also got a lot of Nintendo news. Like Nintendo had a, a um, investors uh, conference. Oh, what, Catherine, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> making it rain. Making making it rain. rain. I, don't think, I don't think Nintendo's going to be making it rain for a little while. I'm like, making it rain the money they all lost on the Wii U. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Because, yeah, apparently they did uh, not do super great like they have in other years, and they started laying out some of their game plans, and one of those game plans happens to be the index. It comes in March of 2017, so we got a little bit of wait. It also means that Zelda is coming on both consoles, Wii U and uh, NX, but I don't know if they're going to wait until 2017 to release that as well, which I really hope not, because if not, what the heck are we going to play over Christmas? Oh, they said they said Zelda was delayed to 2017, but they didn't say when. Mm. Ah, it would make so. the most sense for them to launch that with the console. Yeah. Well, I heard they were only supposed to like put it on the new console, not the Wii U. But it's no, they're putting on both. Okay, that's great though. <laughs> doing the exact same thing as Twilight Princess. Mm. Mm. So uh, I don't know if they're going to do like Twilight Princess where like one comes. I don't think they came out at the same time. No, they didn't. No, I don't know if they're going to do it, but you know, Nintendo's going to put out the NX. I'm going to be lining up to get the NX. And we'll pre-order it as soon as, as, soon as it <laughs> And I'm going to sit at home and I'm going to wait for the new Zelda and then I'm going to spend the next years waiting for my Mario Kart and because I, they've had these since I was four. It's the circle of life. I'm fucked. <laughs> Nintendo can do me no wrong. I will get <laughs> Oh, you know, when you're a diehard Nintendo fan, that's kind of what you got to deal with. Uh, Steph and uh, Julie, do you both have 
that we use. No, I am not really a Nintendo person, surprisingly. I'm so into PlayStation right now that I haven't even, like, thought about Nintendo. Um, I feel you. Well, I mean, for me, it's like, I was, like, honestly waiting until they released the new Zelda because I was hoping that they would make a console based on the design of the new game. But I have a feeling it's not going to happen. So I might just, like, buy it anyway because I need so many games from that, like, console. Yeah, if you're going to play back now, there's lots of good games. Um, there is a Wii U that is a Zelda edition, but it's for Wind Waker. Wind Waker. Yeah. Do you realize that this is the only Nintendo console that is not getting its own dedicated Zelda game? Yeah. You know that Fucked. They yeah. About it's kind of sad. <laughs> well, the the big up for me for the Wii U was the fact that it was backward compatible with Wii games. Mm-hmm. So even though there was no Wii U games, I spent the first six months playing Wii games. That was almost like a a, a blessing in disguise, I guess you could yeah. say, while mm-hmm. they prepared. But I don't think Nintendo really knew what to do with the Wii U. I don't think people, no, I don't think yeah, consumers knew what to do with the Wii U. <laughs> a lot of people thought the gamepad was an accessory for the Wii. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Leah, do you want me to bust out the Star Fox no! face again? Because I'll do it. None of that. None of that. (laughs) Okay. We're going to put that in the grave. All right. What else did they say at the Nintendo? This wasn't conference. What do you call it? Investors meeting? I guess you could say. Um, We got some information on some mobile games. That's kind of cool. So Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem is going to come to mobile. And I believe it's the end of the year? Hold on. I got to remember. I got to check my facts. Check my facts. Uh, I actually really like the idea of Animal Crossing on mobile. That makes total sense to me. I started playing Wii, like, because of the Animal Crossing, so I'm kind of excited it's going on iPhone since, or hopefully iPhone. I assume iPhone. Well, that's what we're going to get to play this fall. I'm excited. Two mobile games. I'm okay with that. birthday. Nice. (laughs) I'm excited to see the Fire Emblem one, because that is my jam. Catherine and RPGs. JRPGs. Julie, how about you? Have you uh, played Animal Crossing? Actually, no. Like, seriously, I think Nintendo for me was always like the basic, like Mario, Zelda. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Zelda, I'm not tattooed for nothing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at that! That's awesome. Because I'm actually working on the Zelda right now, too. So I'm like, I'm like all about Zelda. And and your heart. Yeah, no, it's like really deep, 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 deep in my heart. But it's mostly just the classic, even like Samus and it's all like Jerry Prime and stuff like that. It's like always like the basic that I was playing. So, no, I think it was more into Harvest Moon. Oh, and all classic. We were all like, yes. <laughs> I was <laughs> on the TV. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got some news about an Animal Crossing slash Harvest Moon slash Rune Factory game as, <laughs> that we all love coming up later. But we've got a little bit more Nintendo news. Uh, Splatoon Squid Sisters are coming as Amiibo. Kind of saw that one coming. They're really wow. cute, by the way. I think I'm they're surprised. really interesting designed characters. I'm surprised it's taken them this long to put them out. I don't think they realized the impact they were going to have on the franchise. They're almost more uh, identifiable than the other characters, the other squid guy, squid girl, and then the squiddy thing itself. Um, Maybe because they actually have a name and they have a story and kind of a voice and you get the rest of them are kind of uh, anonymous. Well, I guess they're kind of just shells so that you can fit your own identity into it. Uh, If you want to do that in Splatoon, maybe not. Um, But yeah, they they seemed like the more attractive characters anyway. I'm surprised it took them that long. Yep. Cool. The pink one is really cute. Yeah, they are really cute. <laughs> okay, last little bit on Nintendo is Mitomo celebrates 10 million downloads, yet I've already uninstalled it from my phone. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Mitomo, you had me for a little while, and then I just lost all all drive to go in there one battery hog two i got all these invites and started just like accepting everybody and then i didn't know anybody that was on my friend list (laughs) so once i got to style level 10 i was like okay i'm the most stylish person ever and then quit the game cat (laughs) how about you you wrote our little wrap up of it 
Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it while it happened, and then um, Sailor Moon Drops happened, and I was like, me who? Me to what? Yes. I, I have to collect the Sailor Moon Crystals. Yes. Save the D Tokyo for monsters, because, you know, I grew now up in the 90s, so Sailor Moon is Nintendo Sailor Moon. I'm the whole 90s package, fuck. <laughs> they really need to put out a decent Sailor Moon game. That needs to happen. Seller V1 would be great. Oh my god. Yes! Oh my god. Someone put out a <laughs> action open world Sailor V game. I know I've talked about like having a Sailor Moon game before, but like that that's brilliant. <laughs> Talk to Namco Bandai. I think that's who made it. Is that the other one? I'm trying to remember now. Oh my god. Yeah, it is Bandai. <gasps> Please. Do you think if we message them enough, they'll make it? Just for girls on games. Just for us. Just for us. We will champion that game. We will millions. Please make us this game. Oh my god. Uh, Julia, have you ever cosplay as a Sailor Moon character? Well, yeah, but not the actual Sailor Scouts. Like I did uh, Rahino, just a casual outfit from the US season that they made. Like in the opening, they have like the scene with all the umbrellas. Yeah. So we had a full group of these suits. Like it was a oh, really that's so costume. Cool. So you had in, like, the, the kimono-esque, like, when she was in the temple sort of style? No, not even. It was, like, really just a reset one. It was, like, just basically a white blouse, a blouse with, like, just a black skirt. And it was all different outfits that you never saw before, just casual things. But I really want to do, like, a scout at some point of, like, Ray or, I don't know, uh, I really like, um, I don't remember her Japanese name, but that's, like, Saturn. Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah Saturn. Because she's so cute. She is cute. She and is cute like, and she is everything. I think you could do a really good Sailor Pluto. But yeah. I actually really like her. I'm just really scared about the skin tone. Because I'm so pale. <laughs> uh, she's, yeah, but still, you can get away with that kind of stuff. I really love her though. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff would be amazing to me. Yeah, make. she's so stoic. I think I would just ask my boyfriend to 3D print it. Because we have a home. Wow! Is that what you do? You have a 3D printer? I know, we're kind of getting... No, no, no. I don't do it, but he does it whenever I need it because he's a 3D designer, so it's useful. Oh and it's like a good team up, so yeah. Awesome. So I might just be jelly. like, hi, babe. <laughs> I'm kind of jelly of your 3D printer. Uh, we paid for it. <laughs> That's okay. It's worth every penny. It's worth every penny. Okay, we also got... I guess someone made a meme image of all the uh, Drake, because Drake came out with a new album last week, right? Oh, Lord. News from the Six. We all know this. And <laughs> Michael, what are you doing? My <laughs> fucking hell. It's okay. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. You can come and fly. <laughs> you failed at being stuck. <laughs> So close to getting by. <laughs> like I know when he opens the door to let the dog out, but yeah, he, he wanted he wanted his guitar. Um, uh, oh geez, what's it called? The uh, checking the the pitch. That's what it's called. What tuner? That's what it's called. <laughs> he totally lost me in my train of thought. Oh yeah, we're talking about Drake. So yeah, <laughs> someone took and I gotta I gotta put this link in the chat, but someone decided to take all the images from Drake at the why? Oh, is it temporarily down? That doesn't make any sense. It's crashed because everyone's looking at it. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's on Kotaku. So essentially, someone took all the pictures from Drake's album because you know he puts up promotional pictures with it, mashed them up together, and it looks like something straight out of GTA. So they call it GTA 6, which makes total <laughs> sense, because he's views from the 6. Uh, I was like, yes, please make that game. I will play as Drake. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Everybody is silent. Nobody is like, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not here. here. I don't approve. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just I like to open the article. Movies. Everybody's trying to get into the picture. The picture's pretty good, I must say, because he's like, he's dressed up in like, Fur jacket, and he's looking all swagger, like multiple different shots and stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's the best ones, like when the mansion's in the back and the dog, like it's yes. perfect. It's like yeah. spot on. Spot that I, Franklin I, shot, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was a mashup. 
but it's just his photo and they just put the logo on it yeah the, the gta 5 logo on it and i bought it i was like wow they did a good like photoshop wait a minute <laughs> Oh my, Drake. You're infiltrating everything that is pop culture right now. He has such yep. power. At least he's Canadian. All right, Steph, you went to EGLX. I How did. Was it was it was pretty good. I went both Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, Friday was definitely the best because all of the kids were in school, so I got to actually experience EGLX because Saturday was just, it was overwhelming. There's so many people. Um, but there was a very cool Hearthstone tournament room where they kind of created it as like a tavern. So there was like the suit of armors, there was barrels everywhere. It was just like you were in medieval times almost. It was so cool. Um, but I spent most of my time in like the exhibitor section. Mm -hmm. And I met an awesome game developer called Oddbird Studios, I believe. And they went to Sheridan College, which is where I went to college. So I was super into like trying to figure out what their game was about. And it was kind of like, I want to say like a 3D version of Tower Ascension, if you've ever played that. No, I haven't. Like they just shoot arrows at each other basically and you're trying to kill your opponents. Like that's the whole game, but it looks so fun. Um, they actually sent me a link where you can play it free online. Like you can download it and play it with your Xbox controller or PS4. So I'll put that nice. in chat. But they were, it was just, it was a good experience. It was kind of just like, comic-con with games but you didn't really get to see the games much because there's just so many crowds of people but it was, it was a cool experience so where was it held it was in mississauga but they just say toronto um but yeah it was just on the outside of toronto like right by the airport so okay yeah very cool very cool and uh are you would you go again next year um i probably would because i think this is like the first official big year so i'm kind of curious to see how they grow and what they turn into they did have some big cosplayers there, like meg turney was there and mm -hmm. i was very excited to finally meet her um and she was cosplaying as a guild war ii character i believe and it just it looked incredible she was so sweet and i'm, I'm curious to see who's there next year so nice nice well we hope it goes well next year as well we've been uh we when i discovered the con it was like two mm -hmm. weeks prior to the con actually happening so i was like oh i'm not gonna make it there this year hopefully next year hopefully yeah next year there's so many things i want to do next year including that, including that there's just so many cons yeah. so much fun times only yeah. so much vacation time though <laughs> so i mentioned before that uh you know for the hearths or not the hearthstone the um Animal Crossing and Rune Factory and um, Harvest Moon fans, Stardew Valley. We've all played Stardew Valley. Steph, did you play Stardew Valley? Awkward, I was typing in chat. That's okay. <laughs> no, I did it. I've watched a lot of it, but I haven't. Okay. Julie, did you play Stardew Valley? No. Oh, wow. Don't. Don't, don't, don't start. <laughs> don't, don't start. A crack. Think, think about your costumes that need to be made. <laughs> Honestly, that's mostly why I don't play that many games right now. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> well, for those of us that have spent hours and played through the game, uh, there is more coming to the game. Uh, they've decided, announced that there's going to be console ports and multiplayer coming. The ports are going to be done by another company while Concerned Ape, the developer, and the cool thing about Stardew Valley was it was one guy created the whole thing. Um, who, his name is, well, his online name is Concerned Ape. He's going to work on more in-game content and the multiplayer. So he's working on like more stuff to happen after the three years and other people you can wed and all that kind of stuff. So new farm stuff. So I'm excited to play that when it comes. I don't know how long it'll take him, though. I There's think I'll probably wait till it's on console to finally play it. But It's a perfect game for you to play on the go. Mm -hmm. So if they put it on Vita, DS, mobile, it makes total sense. Yeah. But... I did spend 40 hours playing that game oh my gosh. in year two. Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm at like 40, 50 hours too, and I'm only in year two as well. I was actually playing with an Xbox controller because I was playing so much my wrist was hurting. Mm. Wow. The mouse. So I started playing with the controller so I could have the mouse at work and then the controller when I got home and I played like all freaking night. <laughs> like, it was an addiction. Gotta yeah. get those pumpkins. I know all those pumpkins. I know. I uh, I binge watch House of Cards while playing that game Ooh. in one weekend. That that that's like double. I know. 
That's a lot of information. My words, they're gone. But it's like the perfect scenario. It is the perfect game to play while binge watching something. That's an idea for an article. The best <laughs> games to watch to play while binge watching on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, you need to have the right show to watch because it can't be one they have to pay attention and see every little nitty gritty detail, like Lost or Game of Thrones or something like that. Mm-hmm. But House of Cards, perfect. I would say How I Met Your Mother too. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Uh-huh. Um, if you like watching old 90s sitcoms, Full House or Fuller House. Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. Gilmore Girls, <laughs> Girls. And they're coming out with more friends. There you yes. go. All right, guys. I think we've got an article in the works here. <laughs> <laughs> one last, one last, because it's my favorite. Yep. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. There you oh, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Terry Crews. He's in on Netflix. Yeah, there's three seasons on Netflix right now. The third season just got added. So there was a uh, National Corn Dog Day or Hot Dog Day or Corn Dog Corn Dog Day, I think it was. And someone made a website. And if you hit different keys, like there was a, a song to go with it. I shared this on Facebook. I'll add it. I'll add it into the the podcast thing as well. Um, and if you hit different keys on your keyboard, you get different animations. And one of them was Terry Crews in a shower doing the pectoral dance thing, holding up corn dogs. And I was like, this is amazing. I sent it to my boss and said, hit the letter W. I can get away with that. Oh, it's kind of amazing. Okay, <laughs> last bit of news, and this one Stephanie's gonna like. Like we didn't know it was coming, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare will launch on November 4th and we'll have some space-like action. That means I'm finally interested in Call of Duty. <laughs> because space. Nobody it only cares. took about 50 games. Uh, what? What? Voice of God? <laughs> Were you speaking to us then? I said nobody cares about Infinite Warfare. All we care about is COD 4 Remastered. Yes! All we care about is space. All we care about is Call of Duty. COD 4! <laughs> COD 4 Remastered! <laughs> we do, they should make an actual eSport out of COD 4, which is the best Call of Duty game ever made. Wow. And God has spoken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stephanie, do you have any insight on that? Because I am so not a COD player. I am, like, the new Call of Duty that's coming out... I have mixed feelings about it because I got, like, it took forever to get used to the new jump boost that's in Call of Duty. I'm like, now that it's in space, if there's any kind of gravity tricks or anything, I'm, I'm done. I'm like, I can't play anymore. Well, there's definitely got to be gravity because in there, that yeah, trailer that they showed today, it definitely looked like there was gravity playing. And there was moments of it where I felt like it was dead space. And mm-hmm. I'm really intrigued to find how they're going to do, like, the 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 normal matches in space i'm imagining it's not going to be like that uh they did show a little bit of footage that looked like you're in a spaceship and shooting stuff I'm kind of just hoping it's like call of duty but just space maps which i'm totally down for but if we're if i'm, if I'm floating in oxygen tanks and stuff i'm nah <laughs> no no not no that. i mean i'll probably still play like this is the great best game ever but for now i'm like no <laughs> No. no. Well, I'm intrigued. They got my attention, and I am not a big COD player. I think I've played, like, maybe a total of one hour ever. Ever. So, yeah, they got my attention. Let's see what happens. I'll be interested to watch it. And that <laughs> part of me pretty much wraps up the news for us today. I'm sure there was other stuff that happened, but that's what caught my attention and wanted us to talk about. So, before we get into our topic, which of course is Julie and her cosplay as Scarlet Cosplay, um, I want to throw out there if anybody is interested in uh, throwing some questions our way, you can do so in the chat in Twitch. Um, the Catherine and Simone, Voice of God podcast producer, producer extraordinaire, we'll keep track of them and uh, send them our way. It can be directed at us. It can be directed at uh, Julie about what she does. And uh, yeah, yeah, we love questions. We love hearing from you. So, Julie, Scarlet Cosplay, how'd you get started? Jeez, honestly, it was like really just this kind of like thing that made sense right away because I used to do LARP games. Um, Like if you guys know, it's like Caldar on that sword in French. And so basically, I really like the side of costuming. I was a gamer. I was like a drawer for anything that was manga and anime. And I was a big fan of anime in general. So like all of it together was like kind of like the perfect match. And I don't know, like one of my friends just like talked to me one day about like a tacathon and it was like two weeks before the con. And I basically just like 
like any other girls, like mostly like just bought random stuff to do Misty. <laughs> and that's basically just how I started. Wow. So your first cosplay was Misty. And how long ago was that? It was 2011. Wow. It's not that long, but still. And what was it about your first experience that made you want to continue and hone your craft? Well, I've always been someone that really liked to craft in general. Like, it was a big, like, arts student that really liked everything about it. And just the fact that you could learn so many things by just, like, making one costume, basically, was just, like, amazing. It was just, like, anything that I liked put together, like I said. So, I don't know. Like, it just, like, it went all in that direction on its own, basically, like. I was meant for that. <laughs> cool. What process uh, do you take to choose the characters you choose to uh, create? Well, I'm really someone that likes, in general, like big badass woman. I'm really not someone that does like cute characters, even in stuff time and do it for like making my friends happy and these kinds of like things. But I have to like feel connected and somehow to the character like I don't like to just decide oh I'm gonna do this one because I think it's cool no I really have to like see myself through it maybe that's why that I decided to do Zelda and Lara and uh, Urza is because I have a part of it that's really important in my full life like Lara Croft I've been playing Tomb Raider since I was like seven I think and I've been playing since Tomb Raider 3 and that girl is just like so cool and you, like don't we all wished somehow that we could be like as cool as she is. Oh like, yeah, I, know I would. <laughs> now, um, you sent us a picture of your favorite cosplay. Simon, yeah, can you put that up on screen? Let me know when you'd have, because I want you to. Uh, I know I can't see it. Uh, I want you, uh, Julie, if you don't mind, walking us through this character and uh, what it took you to build it and why it's your favorite. I suffered so much. <laughs> <I can laughs> How long did it take you? how long i think maybe like a couple of months like maybe like three to four months just because i don't know if you know but like doing a full plate is actually really particular whenever like you have a specific shape and the thing is armor makes you look bigger than you actually are right yeah. so i was really terrified to look like a big whale because it's a really big armor piece and i was so scared and i just made sure that the like the waistline was really exactly at my thinnest place just so i wouldn't look too big and it's really funny because that boob is not my real size like i don't know if you see but i don't have that much breast compared to the actual armor <laughs> but yeah like i had three pairs of push-up bras on me while I was making it just because the character in its own like has enormous boobs like so I was like I need to reproduce that really nicely and at the same time it made sure that my waist was really thinner than what I actually like would have been like if I used my real cup size so yeah I cheated because you okay. know drastic cosplayer's boob size ever <laughs> that's what you gotta do to make magic happen yeah, but it was an experience too because it was the first time that actually did work uh, with Black Warbler. So that was really something. But What's I that? Found... Is that the material? Yeah, it's like turbo plastic basically. Okay. Uh, it's the same as regular Warbler, but there's like uh, like better sides of it and like worse sides of it. Like it doesn't stick as well to itself as regular Warbler. But at the same time, it's a lot more smoother. So you don't have that much priming to do. and for me, priming is like hell. It's like this step that I really hate. So I just like painting and building it. Like the last me to send stuff, I'm gonna be so mad. So yeah, but that character is like my my life, and I just like the fact that she has so many different costumes too. Like like in the actual anime, because it's from Fairy Tail. Mm -hmm. Um, it says that she has over a hundred different armors, oh, and wow. you don't even see them all. So I have a lot of shoes from. It's true. <laughs> kind <of> really cool. <laughs> but yeah. It reminds me of Card Captain Sakura and she has a different character a different outfit each time. Yeah, but at the same time, she's so different for her personality. She's like oh, yeah, for little, uh, she's almost <laughs> like a dominatrix, basically. Like it's pretty funny. Wow. I love her. Cool. cool. So <laughs> how many how many different characters have you cosplayed to date? So far. Okay, wait, I have Urza, I did Rehino from Sailor Moon, I did Lara Croft in two different versions so far. Uh, what did I do else? I did Jibril from the anime No Game No Life. 
I did Anna from Frozen. Ooh. Yeah, because my Elsa was like, you need to, or I'm going to, like, smug you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, wait, I did more than that. I have such a bad memory. I did Leaf from Pokemon. Nice. Trainer. Yeah, that was such a comfy costume to do. I keep, I, like, I kept running everywhere in the con just being like, I choose you! Because there was <laughs> you know, everywhere cosplayers. It was great. I don't know. Other than that, I think it's pretty done. Like, I didn't really do any other cosplays since Urza, because Urza is, like, my main goal. Like, one of my goals is basically to have all of her armors, like, in my room. Nice. That'd so do you great. keep do you keep all the pieces and reuse them again, or have you, like, dismantled some of them in order to make other costumes? So I know it's an expensive pastime. And yeah. that's why a lot of folks, like, they have to go to cons to get paid to be able to build more cosplay, right? Because it's not cheap to do. No, but I, I hate, like, accepting money in general for it. But I have other ways to do it, too. But, like, honestly, for my costumes, uh, right now I'm in a really, really small apartment. Mm -hmm. And sadly, I don't really have a choice but to give some away. But the thing is, instead of just uh, selling it, I, I did, like, sell a couple because they weren't that important to me. So I didn't really, mi like, mine. But armors um, that I made for Urza, normally I just give them to my best friend because she's in Urza cosplay too, and she has a lot more space than I do. Mm -hmm. So whatever my costumes fit her, because we don't have the exact same size, well, I just give it to her and I'm like, you better take care of it because otherwise you're going to be like on my blacklist. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's basically it. But like, I kept my first armor because it's that important to me. Even if it's like a bit uh, coming apart right now because I learned so much with it and it wasn't perfect, right? So, but yeah, it's, it's kind of cool because um, that was actually the first armor that I wore while I was being a guest in the convention for the first time. And at my first panel there, I made everybody sign my armor. Oh, that's cool. I have like a cute memory because I'm cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> and I have Yaya that signed it and she did not want it to sign it she was like no 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 I can't do that I'm gonna ruin your costume and I'm like dude if I'm asking you it's because I want you to sign it so please do it so, yeah. uh, I yeah, think so. Yaya's coming back again this year is she not? yeah she's coming to Montreal Comic Con with just Kanigiri uh, somebody else that I cannot say right now because Ooh. I know more stuff than some Ooh. other <laughs> Yeah, um, Kat, we've got some questions from chat. Do you want to read some of them? Yeah. So speaking of cons, some of, uh, the Tiny Guardian one asks, are you coming to OtakuCon 2016 this summer? If so, do you have a cosplay plan for it? Dude, OtakuCon is like my all year long favorite con. I'm not ever going to miss it. Like, I really love Katsukon too, but OtakuCon is like my Canadian favorite convention. So I won't ever miss it, no matter what. Uh, yeah, I'm the kind of person that has, like, years planned in advance, and I try not to change too many things, but that's just life, and I just keep changing things. So, so far, uh, I have, like, like, I think five different costumes for the full weekend. I have, well, my Heart Cross uh, armor that I just, well, that we just talked about that was, like, the photo. Um, I'm going to be doing Young uh, Urza Scarlet too, so I'm a bit scared of that because I've never really cosplayed as younger people. I think she's like 11 in that specific <laughs> costume, so I'm like, okay. yeah, I'm going to be a kid again. Yeah, and then I have um, a big group. We're eight or nine, I think, in that group, and it's cheesy because it's all matching armors. We're all going to be like dressed in gold, basically. Aww. That's impressive. Yeah. No, it's pretty yeah. safe. I think I have it somewhere. Yeah, Great photo. That's, that's my costume for it. Wow. Wow. It's going to be so cool. I'm going to have a sheet. <laughs> uh, being able to hold a sword per day would be great. Like, honestly, that would be amazing. Uh, then that night, we have another costume from Fairy Tale because Fairy Tale. But it's really just like, um, like robes, basically. It's really just um, whenever they get like into a pillow fight in the series and we just like to have comfy costumes are stupid and cheesy and that's my group for for my girls so we decided to do that and on sunday i'm gonna have my zelda from okay enough time that i'm actually working on right now that i'm killing myself to do <laughs> can't wait to see that yeah my, my sewing skills aren't the greatest but 
I'll get through it. So it's cool. <laughs> you have some amazing photographs that you do with your cosplay. Mm -hmm. I think that's what drew me in right off the bat because not only is the, the your art really well well like, executed, but the photography and the special effects done on it would just like makes it even more real. Who do you usually work with as photographers to uh to do I your have stuff? great friends. Okay, like it's really cool because my main photographer, which is Katia per Katia Perrin, Mm -hmm. uh, cosplay photography. Uh, that girl is actually like we both started to do photography for cosplay together. Like my very first photo shoot in my own made costume was with her, and we've basically grown together through it. Like the photo that you just showed was mm -hmm. from her. Uh, so that's my basic one. But right now she's trying to like work on her backlog because she had like such a big year of school that she has a lot of work to do, and we basically don't do shoots anymore for now. And like until she's going to be like done with it. Uh, then I have her boyfriend, which is Eric Pajadez, uh photography. Mm -hmm. That guy is really amazing too. Like, honestly, I really like the fact too that he does behind the scenes uh, videos that he posted on YouTube. That's just really, really fun to do. It's really cool. Um, we've actually filmed something that I don't know if we're going to be able to post, but I wanted to do a video where um, we show how I get dressed in that costume. Just to well, give cool. an idea of like how it's built and like how I put it on. Um, and my other one is basically um, like I work with a lot of different people, but the main big effects that I have on my photos is always from the same girl, which is my friend uh, Marie Grigoire. Mm -hmm. That girl is really cool because she basically just takes photos from other photographers. Mm -hmm. uh, th she needs to have like their consent, of course. Of course. But you pay her to like edit your photos and whatever she does with it is like magic <laughs> like wow. it's just crazy um i have so many photos from her my main Lara Croft photo is actually um taken from her the one with the burning uh forest yeah um i have like a lot of that one uh the newest one that i have with magic everywhere where my hair is like flowy well she just draws hair like that like it's normal to her like she draws it on the computer and like yeah looks great Amazing. I mean, she had good, solid work to start off with, but it's those little <laughs> touches really do it. Nice. Yeah. Stephanie, you had a question of your own, and there's another uh, chat question. Yes. So my question was, is there like a certain cosplayer or just cosplayers in general that you look up to or in like it inspires your work? I have a lot, but I have to say that I think my main one is, it's really funny because her cosplay name is Urza Cosplay, but that girl is from Germany. And I don't know why, I feel like she's not that known, but she's crazy talented, okay? Like, she works with uh, Wurbla with, like, different materials, but her sculpting, like, with, like, ways that she does everything and just the detail work that she does is nuts. Like, she did, I think it was, like, a goddess, um, Athena or something like that that she did really recently, and she sculpted faces of goddess on, on her own breastplate and everything, like, Honestly, I could link it if you want, but that girl is amazing. Like, yeah. Cool. She's yeah, drop us the link way. afterwards. We'll post it with the article. No, it's sick. She, <laughs> that one, and of course my best friend, because like she keeps pushing me uh, around to do more mm -hmm. sewing because I'm such a newbie with sewing. <laughs> she's uh, Basbad Budawa. She works a lot with me for different things. And well, she's basically my Urza twin. Uh, mm -hmm. My first photo shoot that I did was Urza Nightwalker and Urza Scarlet, and she was my Scarlet, and I was Nightwalker. Aww. So awesome! She's gonna um, be wearing a costume soon. So hi. <laughs> so Bonds nine two seven asks, "What are some of the most difficult cosplay characters you have done?" I think for me, it's all about like body issues because. I really want to have abs, so I'm like working really hard these days to like get like a really nice stomach because I have so many upcoming costumes that have like no clothes whatsoever and the belly section mm -hmm. and I'm really not comfy with that so far but I've already made uh, one that was like a, that was Jibril but because of my wings like I had wings basically just like on top of my butt that was like on the side and I think that was kind of nice, but I don't know. For me, it's really just I wish that I could have like a really cool body to make like every Aww. sexy character that I want to do and not feeling ashamed. So 
It's all about the contour. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's basically about that. But like really, um, costume wise, and not being about like looking like the character, I would say. Yeah, I think that my most complicated one is actually. um, I don't know if you guys know the old game Lost Planet Two. No, I'm not familiar with that one. It's a Japanese game. I think it was from the same. Wait, give me a sec, babe. No, you won't hear me. <laughs> so yeah, it was like an old Japanese game that I really, really like fell into. Um, my boyfriend actually like showed it to me. It was like mostly like post-apocalyptic stylish. And it was with uh, gas masks and stuff like that. And I had lights that I had to put everywhere on my bodysuit. And I could not move with it like at all or basically not because it was really in my... Uh, knees and places where you basically need to bend or like move around, right? So I had to get half, oh no, not, not half, like fully naked to go to the bathroom. So oh. that was a big pain in the ass. Yeah, I so, imagine. But I think that like just the, the lights for it were really, really tricky because my friend had to sew them directly on me while I was wearing the bodysuit. So that was really like, am I terrified of needles? So for me, that's like, oh lord, like, don't make me look, like, I'm not gonna look, but just do it, and it's gonna look good, it's, it's cool. So yeah, that was tricky, and it broke down the first day that I wore it, I was so Aww. Well, now you know for next time, when dealing with electronics, you have to work in your joints moving. <laughs> yeah, because it actually, like, it, I don't know if you guys know EL wire, it's like, yes. what, well, that's what we use, and it ripped. Really? I don't I don't know how the hell it did, but it ripped. Wow. Like clearly like in two. Like it was really just two pieces now. I was like, dude, that thing is so strong. How the hell did yeah. I even get that? Yeah, but- I used EL wire in school when I was doing some wearable projects and things. And uh yeah, I'm surprised that it broke on you. But yeah, yeah, that's another character I did that I forgot to say. I did a female wayside from Los Pan 2. It was really, really fun to do. Cool. I, I look badass. You you spoke about, you know, trying to hone your body and, you know, like, get fit and all that kind of stuff. Not that you're not fit now because, like, and I've watched your progress. You're doing really good. Keep up the Aww. good work. I know. I know. It's it's tough. It's very tough to get in shape. Um, <laughs> but do you feel like, do you feel the need to max up the sexuality in the cosplay in order to grow your following? Or are you just doing it because of certain characters that you want to show off your your, your midriff? Because well, those are the characters you want to do. Or do you feel the need that you have to go that direction in order to, like, you know, get yourself well, out more? Okay, like, let's be honest. It's really sad that in the cosplay community right now, it's, like, of course, every girl girls that does like sexy costumes are going to be like more popular quickly because most of the people that watches are mainly guys that are attracted to women so of course it's like a part of it it's the same thing with porn or stuff like that it's like it gets popular because of what it is right so of course it helps but i don't want to be like the kind of cosplayer that gets noticed because of that like i'm actually right now doing costume that's really sexy and i'm really like a bit scared to do it but my boyfriend is like doing his uh, venom snake from metal gear solid 5 and he really 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 wanted me to be as quiet so Lola. quiet yeah. intense costume i mean yeah. swim <laughs> i the mean that he's making is for quiet for now yeah no it's like well the top is more like a swimsuit but the bottom is more like a g-string basically but i'm not doing a g-string just because i have a minimum to what i am okay to do when i now not now okay like maybe later when i get really fit and like really hot and everything but like i'm not there yet so it might come how do you but, feel? How do you yeah. feel about all the um, at cons and stuff like cosplay as a consent and the cons really like pushing that forward? Uh, do you find this is an issue like here in, in Canada or in Montreal? Um, and do you appreciate what the cons have done to try and and battle against you know the misogyny and the and the and the you know harassment and stuff that happens at conventions? I think that we're actually lucky here because it's not as bad as in the U.S. Okay, but. 
I don't know. It's, honestly, I really do appreciate the fact that like everybody tries to like protect and somehow like girls like get like treated that way. But I'm the kind of person that's really like straightforward and don't you freaking dare touch my ass because you're gonna get my hand in your face. And I don't care if you call security, it's your own freaking fault for touching me the first time. And I know he's not gonna be happy and he probably will be like beating you up like more than I would, but yeah, like, no, I don't know, like, I've always been the kind of girl that really, like, protects my own friends, and I guess, like, for me, it's just something that really should not happen whatsoever, but, yeah, I've, I've realized that, like, in World Scene in Toronto, uh, there's, like, conventions that has, like, uh, more activity with that, and it's really cool, like, I really think it's really nice. Actually, me, my friend, and another girl were talking about maybe starting, like, a group for uh, a whole, like, movement for that where you could actually go like refuse yourself with these kind of people if you're really feeling like uncomfortable with certain guys sometimes it's sad but like staff cannot necessarily help you out because they don't have proof or like because they just cannot do anything about it but staffs people cannot always help you and that's just sad sometimes so how do you think um uh, girls and guys that encounter that kind of harassment at a con can um you know, protect themselves or what should they do in that kind of a scenario? Uh, is it just like messaging a friend and making sure you have somebody go around with you so that you have a little bit of security with you? Is it, you know, how do you deal with this the, the situation right there on the spot? Well, I think that being alone is like not really like a good idea, of course. Like if you already feel scared because like, I don't know, this guy's following you around or you feel like not comfortable in any way well of course don't stay alone like that's always the basics uh it's stupid but like sometimes i feel like if you're with a guy friend well of course you're gonna have less problems than if you were with another girl right because like for some guys doesn't matter if you're one or two like they might still do it because they don't really care but either that or you can just go warm maybe like security or call someone that you feel safe around or at least let people know because if you don't well that's how it gets really easy to get you and i feel like you should just at least tell someone i like the idea of the group and i like i maybe even like a twitter handle when you're at a certain con you could tweet it out and if somebody sees you you know like see something happening to watch out for it a protected group of guys and gals that that know you know to watch out for that kind of stuff seems like a good idea cuz yeah i mean a lot of it a lot of it's just conversation as well you know get people talking about it so that people know that one this stuff happens and two to make people to educate people to know that it's not appropriate because sometimes I think people just don't realize. Yeah, but the thing is, if you don't speak up, well, that's when it gets easier for any other guy to just like try and with you. But like, I know it's not as easy for anyone. I know that I have it really easily. Like if you try it, you will hear me out, even if you're like against me or anything. But like, I, I would just do it anyway, because sometimes it just like surprises the person and they're just not used to having like a reply to it. So yeah. they're just like, okay well they're just gonna like leave around or just like go away mm -hmm. but yeah honestly i think it would just like grab the person by part of the hand and like just bring in to security and be like that dude just touched me yeah that's, <laughs> like, a, good idea. <laughs> that's a good idea when in doubt go to security because most of these cons now are used to having to deal with as unfortunate as they are and uh and yeah, they've got like special measures in place and procedures and things like that. Yeah. If, it's, if it's you, it's probably happened to somebody else as well. I'm lucky though. I think it never happened to me. No. Oh, no. Somebody's popular. I had, <laughs> that was like, cute. The words that I had was like basically just like a look, but it wasn't like any physical thing. Like the only thing there anyway. <laughs> um, on another note, how do you find the cosplay scene in Montreal? I really love it. Honestly, I think in general, like, of course, there's going to be drama everywhere, but like, whenever you get like around with like closest friends, mm -hmm. it just gets really fun and people are just really helpful to each other. Like, we always like to like help ourselves like in our tiny group or like even elsewhere. Like, I've never really met anybody in Montreal. That oh. Oh. Did we lose Julie? I thought that it was, was me. Like, 
I'm too helpful. Oh, Julie, I think you might have to repeat yourself there. I think you uh, stalled out for a second. You still hear me? Yeah, can hear you now. Dude. Okay, my computer is like freezing, but it's. Oh. Oh. hearing. So it's like funny. Okay. Did you hear me? Now we can hear you. I think it's a little back to normal now. It's yeah. still down. Still no video, though. No more video? Is it being spastic? Well, only her. You guys are fine. At least you can hear? Yeah, we can hear oh. you. Okay, well, what didn't you hear? Like, the, 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 what was the last thing I did? Uh, when you were talking about um, your community here in Montreal and some friends that you work with together. Yeah, well, I think it's a really good thing, though, because, like, most people here just, like, want to help each other. And we're, like, we're just a big group of geeks, basically. And it's really fun because I know so many uh, that just meets like at L2, like on Thursday nights or Friday nights, and we're just like chilling around. And it's kind of really cool because we keep like close to each other and that's just fun because it's how you get like stronger as a group. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed you do uh, Google Hangouts. I've actually attended a few of them where you are crafting your costume and other people are doing the same thing and you're trading tips back and forth. Do you find that that really helps your creative process process and what inspired you to like start those types of events online well i'm oh i keep technical difficulties <laughs> a message so you like to do that just because the fact like a video in front of me where people do it and then it gives you like a better idea of like how you could do it on your own mm -hmm. so for me, it's like mostly that and the fact that you can, for once, have the chance to speak to them too. Like, it's really not just about uh, working on your stuff. It's really about, like, them having a little bit of a chance to, like, get to know you more as a person. Mm -hmm. so, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm really not the kind of person that, that likes the hands between my fans and I. I'm, I'm just, like, friendly with everyone and I like people. So I'm always, like, really happy to try to help everyone, basically. Very cool. Very I'm just cool. gonna butt in to say thank you to Olda too for the ten dollar donation. Ooh, thank Ooh. you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Much love. Um, you also recently just started a Patreon. Can you give us some details on that process and what you offer your Patreon followers? Well, I wanted to give something more, but like for any cosplayers, it's really all about like having the time to make some more. So it really helps me out. Um, now I'm, I've started to like decide to like, whenever I'm at some point of like the creation of the costume, well, I stop posting it like on Facebook, on any social media basically. And I just like continue to do the same, but on Patreon specifically. So they really get to see like the full progress of the full costume. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on like where you are in the pledges, well, you can get a high-res photo that you can basically print out this prints and it's like already contributed like that. Uh, I also do uh, blueprints that... Oh, cool. Yeah, because I'm a graphic designer too, like as a, an actual job. So I thought that it would be like a really cool idea to add that. And I really like the fact also that like um, one or two months after that that one was already published, well, now I add it to my own store. So it's really like for everyone to just like get it. Um, so yeah, I have the blueprints. I have also, um, I'm starting to do tutorials, but I'm still like, learning because I'm not that good uh, with like editing right now, but I'll get to it. Once I get my computer, I think it's gonna be like a lot easier. Um, and for now I'm doing uh, like a, a photo like journal of like how I build a full piece from A to Z. But once I get like a new camera, because right now it's like still in the process, like I'm still saving up for it. Well, I actually want to do like more videos in general, but I'm missing um, that kind of material right now to be able to like film myself everywhere. So yeah. Very I'm cool. Really, you know, people are really nice. Like, I'm, really sure, cool. I'm sure everybody's going to be, all your followers are going to be really intrigued by that. I love the process. I love seeing it from start to finish. That's that's part of the hook. And I like seeing the fact that you update your fans with uh, information of like how you're building things and giving a little, almost like, you know, insider baseball style behind the scenes. It's really cool. Well, like, honestly, I've learned like that with like any other cosplayers. Like, it, 
like you basically learn a lot more from like progress photos and just the actual costume finish mm -hmm. so i figured if you guys want to learn well that's the easiest way that you can actually have it mm -hmm. so and i'm really addicted to like share my my newest progress even if it's just like a stupid photo of like just my costume not working out well i'm gonna post it anyway <laughs> Well, it's good. We learn from, you know, you learn from mistakes and we learn from your, you know, mishaps and whatever else. And those people that are interested in seeing your anguish as you go through the process. <laughs> and then it feels like real successes when, when, you know, like the costume turns out and like the materials worked and everything fell into place and it's all magical photo afterwards. <laughs> yes. Like my damn fabric that I had to buy like two or three times just to get the freaking right one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. And I wasted 80 bucks on that. Ah, uh, that's tough. That's tough. <laughs> well, Julie, thank you so much for coming on our podcast today. I think this pretty much wraps it up for us. Um, if people want to check you out and what you do, um, let us know here now where you're going to be appearing next in costume and uh, your social media and all that jazz. Yeah, sure. Well, of course, I'm on uh, Facebook on Scarlet Cosplay. Normally, I think I'm like the first one on the row. I think so. Uh, yeah. yeah, then you have Twitter, uh, which is basically always the same thing. It's always Scarlet uh, underscore uh, Cosplay. Mm -hmm. Same for Instagram. Uh, and I'm on a lot of other websites like uh, worldcosplay.com and stuff like that. So, yeah, we'll see that. And what was your other question? The costume that I'm actually working on, the convention? And, that one? and when, where are you going to be next? Like, where can yes. we see you? Because it's, uh, it's almost cos uh, con season now. Well, there's a tiny new convention going on uh, next Saturday. Well, that really? that week, actually. It's, like, brand new. It's, like, in Trois Rivières. Oh, cool. And it's free event. It's really just for a day. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically free. So, like, if you guys want to come, it's kind of really cool, though. Like, they managed to make that at the same time as the free comic book day. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm going to be in Lara Croft. Uh, and they are like they're gonna have their own costumes uh on mannequins like basically like a, a show i guess or like something like that i'm not even sure yet but i know they're gonna have like two or three costumes of mine like on mannequins that's pretty that's cool awesome. yeah. yeah and then it's gonna be uh otago comic-con mm -hmm. coming up i think it's like in two weeks I'm yeah so yeah that's like uh, the 13th or something yeah it's i don't know no, i think it was like the 13th to the 15th right something like that yeah yeah, I think that's it. So I'm really excited because my friend Kristen is going to be there. Because I'm a big, big uh, fan and friend of Kristen Huggy. Nice. And she's going to be there and she was like, you better come and see me at my table. And I'm like, of course I'm going to come. I'm really awesome. happy to see her. <laughs> awesome. And you're going to be at Otakuthon and Montreal Comic Con? Yeah, and I'm going to be at Yeticon too, which is oh, a nice. new con in Blue Mountain. The so, new con? Yeah, it's like kind of a colossal con but like in canada so we're really hyped to yeah. like see how it's going to turn out like That's it's a con cool. so another reason for working out <laughs> <laughs> <Yay. Nice. laughs> awesome well we really appreciate you coming and spending the time taking it away from your costume building to hang out with us here this evening it's been awesome um Thank you, Stephanie and Catherine, for also joining me on this fun adventure this evening. Uh, it's it's going to be a good week. Um, if For those folks that want to keep up to date with us, uh, we got some cool stuff happening this week, of course, on our Twitch channel. Uh, right here, we've got Catholic tomorrow night, Pink Smurf on Wednesday night. We got something special happening on Thursday night. Because so much has been on the go in the esports world, we can't always fit all of it into the podcast. We're going to try something. So bear with us, but we're going to try an eSports cast and see how that goes. So it's going to be myself, uh, first episode of me hosting. We're going to have uh, Sarah, Simon, and 8-Bit Blonde Alley on the podcast. We're going to talk about some of the news that's been happening in the eSports world since, uh, you know, it's pretty topical, right? You know, interesting stories. And if you guys like it, we love feedback and we want your feedback. So if you like it, holler at us, let us know, and if it goes well, Maybe we'll turn it into a bi-weekly, weekly, monthly, something or other thing. You know, <laughs> that'd be kind of fun to try out. So yeah, if, uh, and of course, there's always really cool articles up on the sites, including Stephanie's DIY pillows. So yeah, go check out girlsongames.ca. And of course, you can always catch this podcast every Monday night right here on Girls on Games. Uh, Twitch channel and on iTunes and YouTube afterwards if you don't watch it the night of because you know sometimes you got things to do and people to see <laughs> we understand but we still want to share the fun with you so yeah 
If you want to follow up with us, girlsongames.ca, of course. And then, of course, Twitter, the Girls on Games, YouTube, all of it. Instagram, Facebook, it's all Girls on Games. So have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with us. Enjoy playing some games, and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.